Have you ever wanted to create your own vertical scheduling calendar, but didn't know where to start or how to create one? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers. And this week, we're gonna do just that with the impressive vertical scheduling calendar. I'm gonna show you how you can create this fully customizable application, complete with holidays, scheduling start time, duration, days off, appointment types that are color coded, and a whole lot more. And the best of all, we're gonna do it all from scratch. Every line of code, every function, every feature, every formula right in front of your eyes. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic, not very difficult, application that we're going to create from scratch together today and that's the vertical schedule and the idea behind this scheduler is to have an entire year of scheduling in one vertical scroll and all we need to do is use a few buttons to actually go to the individual months so it's going to be a great training we're going to be able to add update delete and save appointment items simply with a few clicks of a button and the schedule is fully customizable. I create these applications every single week. Every Tuesday, I create intensive dynamic applications for you. And also every weekend, I do basic VBA training. So make sure you do get subscribed. Go ahead and click on the notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings alerted to you each and every week. In fact, twice a week. This template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below under the word download, and I'll make sure to get this sent over to you with your name and email. Thank you. I do appreciate your continued support. If you do want to join our Patreon, I create additional trainings each and every week called Feature fix or focus where I add additional features, I fix any issues, or I focus on specific areas. And that all comes from your input as a Patreon or YouTube member, Silver, it's the same thing. Also with PDF codebook. So you get all the resources and that means all the icons, pictures that were used, any other resources that'll come along with a lot of others. So that's going to all happen on our Patreon platform or YouTube Silver. So I really appreciate the continued support of our members. All right, so let's get to this week's training. This week's training comes from a YouTube comment. It's DevOps said, I need a vertical calendar and I struggle to highlight the weekends though. Okay, so that was just one day ago. I thought it was such a nice idea. I went ahead and worked on it yesterday and created this today. It's a vertical scheduling calendar. On this program, we've created many calendars, but this one I really like the idea because it doesn't necessarily need to refresh on a per month basis. All we're simply doing is moving it, except when we change the year. So when we click this month or next month, all it does is skip to the dates. If we scroll it vertically, I don't have any appointments for March or anything, but if they were, they would be here. So we can either manually scroll or we can use the buttons to scroll. However, if it does go to a previous year, then of course it would. So for example, right now we're at 2024. If I go previous month, we're going to go into 2023. And then of course we would get a refresh. So it's really a handy little scheduler. And what I like also about this is the customization ability. And just as we had requested, we can now highlight individual weekends so we can show the days off. For example, if I am going to unselect Saturday and Sunday as those are non-work days, we look over the calendar, we see that both Saturday and Sundays are now highlighted. So it's kind of helpful. If we were to select both as work days, of course, they would both be unhighlighted there. And that's gonna happen through conditional formatting. And we're gonna create this from scratch, of course, and I'm gonna walk you through every step. Also, we can customize the schedule start time. We can customize the schedule duration. We can highlight off days if we don't want to. We can highlight holidays. So for example, holidays are highlighted here. So we can see individual highlighted. This is a holiday on the first and we have anything in green as a holiday here on the 15th. So we're gonna be adding that. So that's gonna be a lot of fun with that. Also in the admin, we can change the date format. So we notice here, we see we've got date format. So it's just three digits. So we could quickly and easily change it to a four digit date. So if I put a D here, and that's gonna change it automatically to the full day. So you see now it's automatically updated. So the date format is also customizable, which is really handy. So we're gonna be going over that. All right, so that's pretty much it. We've got a list of holidays, times, and an appointment database. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this scheduler here 
I'm going to move it over to the side. And what that's going to do, it's going to let us use our blank workbook here. Now, this is a blank worksheet, I should say. We do have an admin sheet and I do have a database, which is going to help speed things along as these videos. I'll try to do this as quick as possible, but I want to go step by step to make sure that you can understand everything that is going on within the workbook. So we're going to start out right now. So the first thing what we want to do in our calendar is we want to create an admin column. So columns A and B are gonna be used for admin and they're gonna be hidden. So we're gonna give those both a distinct color. We'll use this gray here as we've done if you've seen my videos. I'm going to drop this down. I'm gonna pin the tabs because we're gonna be using it while we customize it. And I wanna give it a very specific color. So let's do row one all the way to right around, let's just say BA. And I'm going to use control one. What that's gonna do is gonna pop up our formatting cells. We're going to go with the fill and i'm gonna use a fill effects and i've got some custom colors here which is this dark blue and a little bit lighter on that and we're just going to give that a little bit of a fade with the two color gradient so we're going to click ok the next color down below that we also want it to blend in so we're going to use that blue and i'll just use that for our main color so i'm going to use that all the way up to let's say row five so we can go all the way down here to row five and give it that color now it's the main color so we're just going to give it that color here we're going to be using fields in here and i've got some little bit of formatting already done on this it's just going to help move things along also what i want to do is i want to have our calendar remember we need all the rows of a single year so we're going to go all the way down to right around 371 which is about right for a full year of 365 or 366 years so we're going to go all the way down to 371 which is right here and i'm going to use it on column d so column d i'm going to call it all the way to that to column c so we're just going to go all the way up here and i'm going to hold down the shift key and then it's going to click c and we're going to give it that background color and that's going to be the basis for our days so we can scroll up here and now what i would like to do is we can start customizing this a little bit now inside row five here what we're going to do is we're going to put day and then time okay so then i'm going to use the bar here and then i'm going to use time and i'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it's a little bit smaller we'll zoom in a little bit here while we're working with it now what i want to have is i want to have the days here so we can start out with a day here and then i want to put the times here that's going to be good so let's put our title in here i've got this is kind of already formatted for our theme so what i'm going to do this admin and settings i'm just going to copy this using control C then I'm going to go in the calendar and I'm going to do control V I'm going to paste that in here I don't necessarily have a logo for this I didn't create one but uh, maybe I'll do and then we're going to call this vertical scheduling calendar as you saw all caps vertical scheduling calendar and hopefully I got it spelling right for a change okay that's going to be fine and now what we want to do is we want one row for the spacer so row two will be a spacer row three is going to take on our form field so the first one i want to have this is our appointment item it's really the name of the appointment notice that this has already been merged and centered it just kind of makes things a little bit quick right so notice that g3 all the way through j3 has already been merged i'm going to skip one as a spacer the next one again another merged and centered already this is going to be for our appointment date it just helps move these videos along because on this one i'm going to be doing both designing the screen and i'm going to also be doing all the programming during the video also the next up we also want to know the time so what is the time of that appointment and then also i want to put that time in here and then next up again one more skipping and i'm going to put that duration i want to know the duration how long is the appointment going to take that's going to be important because we need to add in and we'll leave white space there next up we're skipping one and then i also want to put in what is the appointment type we do have a list of appointment types inside our admin we'll be including a drop down list for that so we can select a specific appointment and then the next one already been merged and centered i'll put that white next up i want to put any notes for that so we're going to put in appointment notes here we can put in just any text for that and then again this has already been merged and centered just to make things move a little bit quicker and we can zoom out a little bit so you see that's going to take up the entire screen we do want to make sure that when our columns are hidden we want also the button sets so that's going to look good we're going to put our button sets row four is going to be enough space for all of our button sets what we're going to do is we're going to format these so i'm going to hold down the control i'm going to highlight both our fields and our labels and i'm just going to highlight them all as i select them and then what we're going to do again control one i'm going to go to the border and i'm going to use a white font and then you're not going to be able to see this i'm going to select this and outline although you can't see any change because it's white so we're simply putting a border of white and we can put a dotted line which is actually here in the middle so i'm going to select it although you wouldn't be able to see it clicking okay because it's white great saving our work so far always a good idea we want to center the title over the main screen so we're going to center that here 
and we can just increase it. And it's already centered, it's already formatted, makes things a little bit quicker. Very good, so we kind of have the basis of it now. So inside here, I'm gonna put the times, we do wanna put a button set and some icons. So we're gonna do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna insert a shape here, and it's gonna be a rectangular square corner shape, and I'm just gonna put it right in here, and we're gonna call it this month, on all in capitals. And the first one we wanna do is we wanna get that formatting just right of the button, then we can duplicate it. So I'm going to use probably this one right here, and I'm going to call the black font. So we're going to use a text fill. And then I want it bold, and I want it uh, in the middle and right justified. We want to leave space for the icon. So I like that. That looks good. We can actually use a shadow on that. So let's use a shadow shape, which is this one right here that contains a shadow. I'm going to duplicate it using Control D. Once I duplicate it, I need buttons for our appointment. So I'm going to put this right here. This is going to be for our new appointment. So we don't have a whole lot of space. So I'm going to put new appointment and i'm going to abbreviate it there saving room for the icon as well next up i'm going to duplicate that there and then what i want to do with that duplicated one is i want to give the user the ability to both save or update it so we're going to use both save backslash and update for that a little bit more room for the icon Control d for the delete we also need to be able to delete the appointment so delete appointment so it's relatively basic so now once we've got all of our button sets we can add two more buttons. I wanna be able to add a previous and next button for the months. So we're gonna use shapes and I'm going to use one of these arrows here. And I'm simply going to increase it here. And I also wanna make sure that the button height is about the same. So 0.29 on the height is fine on that. So we can set this to 0.29 as well. And I like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're up to that. Now this might be a little bit big. So let's just highlight these. I think because we also need to put in our rows. So let's just go 0 0.25 because we've got a limited space. So what I want to do is I want to put the buttons up here and then I want to put the times in this row. That should be sufficient. We have the times in this row here. After we do that, we need to format this just as we did before. So we're going to format that using the same font. And then we also want to give it that black text fill and this one is going to be called next month so we'll just type in next month and also what we want to do is we want to take the text we want to remove any of the uh, margins here so we can select on that and then zeroing out the margins on that and that's going to allow us to put in more text in a smaller space we do need to increase the width of the button to fit it all in so probably about one here and i want to make sure it's bold just like it is so that looks pretty good just like we have before what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to go into the shape format and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to flip it horizontally and I'm going to use this for the previous month. So we're going to call this previous and then month. Okay, then again, it's not quite big enough. So I'm going to use, hold down both of them and I'm going to make it 1.1, which should be sufficient for both. Great. So I like the way that that looks and our previous month will go up on the left side here, our this month here. And then we just need to add our icons and then our next month here. So things are looking pretty good. We can reduce that. If you want that third vertical, you just need to zoom in and then bring it down, reduce it a little bit. Now we're ready for the icons. Once you have all the buttons placed, you want to put your icons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert pictures and I've got the low icons. And of course you want to have these icons. I'll make sure they're available on our Patreon or YouTube members platform. I'm going to scroll up into the folder that I've been working on here and I've got some icons here. I'm going to use all of these icons. This is going to be for the add new, this month, save and update, and delete. So we're going to insert those, and I'm going to set them all at the same, so 0.2. And I know I move a little bit fast, but please feel free to slow down this video. We do have a lot to cover. So I'm going to put this for the new appointment. I'm going to use this for the this month. I'm going to use this for the save and update. And then all the way on the right side, we're going to be use this for the delete appointments. The button sets and the macros for this are relatively simple. Very good. Now all we need to do is just adjust the button sizes so that they are consistent. And then all we want to do is then group the buttons after we've lined them up. So what we're going to do is hold down the control, make sure that they are here. We see the a line in the middle, and then I'm going to group them together. And I'm going to do the same thing for our save and update making sure that they're consistent spacing so that things look professional, holding it down in the middle, grouping it. I'm gonna do the same thing with the new appointment, making sure that we have consistent spacing here. All right, very good. So we see that the pattern, and now once we've done that here, we can do the last one with the this month button. Then we're gonna get everything lined up accordingly. So now everything's been grouped. So now we're gonna zoom out a little bit, and I wanna encompass all these shapes. We can do the individual groups. So these are our navigation. So we're gonna put those in the middle and I want them separated here. We can see distributed horizontally. Okay, well I can group them individually and then I can do the same things with this one. So again, selecting on each individual button, making sure they're lined up here, distributed here in the middle and then distributed also horizontally. 
and then grouping them together. Once they are grouped together, I want to select both groups and I want to line them up. I also want to use control one and I want to make sure that inside the properties they are moved but don't size with cells. That's very important because if I adjust the column widths, I don't want those buttons stretched. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. Now what we want to do is we want to start filling out our time and date. And our starting time is going to go right here inside E5. I want that to be our first starting time. So to do that, I want to set, we've got in our admin. So right here, this is called start time. I've given this a drop down list. This drop down list of times, it simply comes from this list. So I've got a drop down list of data validations. I've already given this named range called start time. All I did was just simply type in here, start time, and that's going to name it. Once I know that our start time, I can do that exactly right here. So equals start time. Okay, so that's all we would need to do. So we see it's already been formatted, given it a custom format, just so we know what was done. And that custom format is simply H colon MM and then AP. So I've changed it a little bit. If you're not sure, you would just go into time like this, give it a time and then customize that accordingly. And then you could do so that's all I did for that custom and I've given all of these a format now what would be the next time the next time this is a nice schedule we have a dynamic interval meaning what is the next time it's dynamic what if we wanted every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes I've got a list of durations here so how often is dynamic meaning it can change so here I've got the scheduled duration we have a drop down list we can make it pretty much anything we want so again also this is given a format here if we take a look I just want you to see this time format so we know how to get that it's this one here I'm using 1330 that's the time format that I really want to use without any AM or PM because we're really focused on hours and times and not whether it's AM or PM so I've given this a named range and this is called duration let's take a quick look back into the calendar if I take this time and I add in the duration for example equals this time plus the duration this is why these named ranges are so nice I get 815 great what if I change this to 30 if I change this to 30 we see that it automatically changes to 830 so that is the benefit of having these dynamic durations as you change them they're going to change automatically great so knowing that all we need to do is simply drag this over all the way to the last one I think we're going to go all the way to BA and that's going to take it all the way to 8 p.m. which is quite nice so now all we need to do is just give them a little bit of a format I'm going to hold down the control I also want to include that first one I'm going to use control one and I'm going to go in the borders here and again I want all white borders so I'm going to select white and I'm going to use all the outside and the inside so all these they're white so you can't see them and click OK so I like the way that that looks zoom out to 100 percent here and we see that we've got all the times associated perfectly just as the starting time if I decide I want to change that starting time to 9 a.m. So we just select 9 a.m. here and we go back to the calendar and we see that everything is adjusted. The only thing we may have to do is increase these that don't show the time. So we would just double click that and that would I may add that in VBA. So that means every single time a user changes this that it's automatically is going to expand or shrink the columns based on that so that it always fits. So I think that's kind of a nice idea. I may do that. So continuing on, let's go back to 8 a.m. So we see how that we can make those changes and it's going to automatically fit using those named ranges. And I can simply type in eight and then it's going to select here. So now what about our dates? I want to put that first date here. We're going to need a little bit of information inside our admin. So we're going to start on our admin right here. Now inside that admin, the first thing what I want to do is I want to know that appointment ID. Inside our appointment database, we've got some information. I've got an appointment ID, name, and so on and so forth. I've also got a named range that's associated with the appointment ID. We go into the formulas, name manager, and we take a look at the appointment ID. I've created it already, it just moves things on along a little bit quicker. This is an offset formula, which I use often, meaning it expands automatically using the data inside that column. So as we increase the data, our named range does. So if we take a look, we see that the dancing ants go all the way down to the bottom. So it encompasses all of the data. And notice that they're all numerical, right? They're all numbers. So what I want to do is I want to know the row that's associated. So if I look here, I see appointment ID. There is no number one, is in row number four. So if I put the appointment ID, so let's just put appointment ID, and then I put two. I also want to know what row that's associated. So let's just put appointment database row. So what's the row? We're going to use equals if error. 
I'm gonna use a match formula and I'm looking up this particular appointment ID and I want to look it up in a named range called appointment ID. I want an exact match, so I'm gonna use zero. If there's an error, I'm gonna show empty, but I also want to know what row is associated. The first one starts on row four, so I'm gonna add three. And what that's gonna do is gonna tell me appointment ID two is on row four, which is exactly what I want. Next up, I also want to know what is the next one. When I create a brand new appointment, what is the next appointment ID? We can use the max formula to do that. So appointment ID, and we're gonna use equals if error. In case there's no date at all, we need to use if error. We're gonna use the appointment ID. So the appointment ID, I wanna know the maximum number. Remember, these all have to be numerical. So I'm gonna add one, meaning the next available. If there's an error, meaning no data, I wanna revert it to one. This is gonna be our next appointment ID. So it's telling us that our next appointment ID is 64. If we look in the appointment ID and we go all the way down to the bottom, we see our last one is 63. So that means our next one is 64. So that's exactly what we want. Next up, I also wanna notate what is the selected year? And I want that in the cell. So selected year. And then what we want to put in is what are the years? So let's just put in the current year, 2024. And I also want to know the selected month. So we're going to put in the selected month here is, let's just put in one for January, two for February, either one. Next up, what I want to have is some text. So if, let's take a look at this here. I want to have the month text. So I'm going to duplicate this title here. So control C, control V or control D. And I'm going to put it somewhere around here. Obviously that's too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it down to something more manageable, like let's say 22. Here is where I want the title of the month, but it's going to be dynamic, meaning it's going to say January of 2024 or whatever it says. And I want that to appear in here. So it's going to have to be linked to a cell because I want it dynamic, whatever's in here. So we're going to link it to this cell and we're going to call this month text. Okay. Inside that month text, we're going to take this year and I'm going to take this month and I want to put a text based on that. So how would we do that? Well, the best way to do that is we're going to use the date function. So here I'm going to use equals date and wait, before I do that, I just want to send it back to a general format here because this is already custom, but I want to show it to you. So I don't want it to be formatted already equals date here. What is the year? Here's the year. What is the month? The month is located right here. And then we'll set the day as just a one. Okay, so now all we have is the date. But what I want to do is I want to customize. So now if we take a look in here, I'm just going to use equals and we're going to have to format it again. It's going to remove that format. I'm going to just select it right here. So basically it's going to show that. And notice we have to reformat. So we need to reset it to 22. I'll probably have to do this again. And we want to set it to white here, just as we did here. Okay, so now we have the date, but of course I don't want it in that format. I want it customized. So how are we going to get that? So we can use a custom format. So we're going to go into more number formats here and I'm going to choose custom. And what do I really want to show? I want to show the full month. So that's four M's. I want to show a comma and then I want to show a space and then I want to show the year, the full year and click OK. So that's going to change it there. But now we just need to update it. So if we take a look at this, this is Aptos Black 32. So we want to make sure that the font is set similar to what is here. So Aptos Black and then we can change it. OK, so that's looking pretty good and we can increase the font a little bit down. OK, so now we have that. So now as we change the month here, it's going to automatically change. Perfect. So I like the way that that's looking. So we see that it's dynamic. Now, of course, this is going to show if we were to expand this, it would show the full, but we don't necessarily need that. We don't need it that big, but we know it is there. Perfect. So things are looking good. Now, what I would like to do, save our work. That first date, I want to put in right here. So what is that date? We're going to use again, the date function here equals date is exactly the, what we did. The year is going to be here. Then we're going to choose the month, which is going to be right here. And then we're going to choose one. I want the first day of the year. So that's going to be it. Perfect. Very good. In fact, this one, I'm going to change this to one. It's always going to be the first day of the year. Only the year is going to change. Okay. Only this. Now we're going to give this a name range. I want to make sure that we know this is the calendar year and this will call this the calendar month. So it's going to be used in our code. If we like, we have that availability. Great. So now all we need to do is simply add one. So equals this plus one. That's going to give us the next date. Now, all we need to do is just bring it down all the way to 371, which is going to be right about here. Perfect. Now this happens to be a leap year. Let's just take a look inside February. I just want to show you that it's a leap year. 
So notice that it says Thursday, February 29th, right? Sometimes it goes to the 28th, right? So for example, if it's last year, if I change this year to 2023, and we're going to then go down all the way to the bottom here, let's look at the last one. We see it's January 1st, and I really don't want to show the first day of the next year. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of formula. I want to look to see if the year of this date plus the year of this date, if it's not the same year, then show empty. So how would I do that? So we're going to use equals year i want to check the year of this date right here if it does not equal we, we need an if sorry let's put that in here if in the parentheses we're checking on that year so we're going to compare it so we're going to use does not equals and then once again we're going to check the year of d370 plus one so if those two years are not the same then what do we want to show then show empty otherwise simply show d 370 plus one, and that's gonna be end parentheses. So now it's gonna show blank. However, if I change it back to the current year, which is 2024, and then we go back down to the bottom again, control shift down, we see that it changes. So that's exactly what I want. I wanna show nothing if there's nothing in the year. That's gonna take care of our leap year dates for us. Perfect, saving our year. So now all we need to do is update the year or the month, and we're good to go. Perfect. Next up, let's go ahead and add the same kind of formats that we have in fact i'm going to select all of these because i want the entire once we've highlighted the entire range we're going to use control one and then i'm simply going to format that so we're going to go into the border here again using our white here and i'm going to just going to use the outline and we'll use the solid line and the outline clicking okay and then we'll use this right here okay perfect it's kind of hard to see that's exactly what i want so each one individually has us okay very good so we've got the formation of our vertical schedule pretty much set and we have our admin now let's just go ahead and highlight our admin so we can put borders around it and give that a color so that we can highlight the admin all right very good so everything's looking really good and we're ready to move on to the next step we can now add in some data validation in the admin screen we see we've got a list of times and also we have a list of durations if i go into the formulas name manager and i take a look at times i've already got a list of times here and i've already got a list of durations here so that's going to be handy we can use those as data validation drop down lists for our time and our duration field so that's exactly what we're going to do i'm going to bring this down i don't want to click on this here so we're just going to bring it down here selecting on the time here we're going to go into the data data validations here we're going to check on the list and it's going to say equals times and that's going to provide a drop down list of the available times we can also simply just type something in and it's going to come up the first one okay also want to do the same thing for durations data validation list equals durations durations clicking okay and we want to make sure that that is going to contain a list of durations and as it does okay so you see the complete list if i select on everything it's here appointment types very similar we have that also here a dynamic list of appointment types in the formulas name manager and we have something called appointment types here also using the offset formula so we can add that to the drop down list data validation for appointment types all we need to do is just click on the data tab and then go into the data validations here select on list and then equals appointment types equals appointment types now we see we've got a list of appointment types perfect so we can put in any item let's say appointment with fred fredders he's got to make his appearance here and we have an appointment date now we want to make sure that we can put in any i can add a drop down list calendar if i want to or a drop down calendar here pop-up date picker and we also have some notes test notes okay things look good and they're formatted correctly now let's go ahead and format this schedule i want to make sure that the schedule is formatted let's take a look we don't need that extra one there so we can delete that moving on what i'd like to do is i'd like to format these cells so i'm going to highlight all the way over here and i want to make sure to go down to row 371 so i'm going to drop it all the way down here to 371 which is right here which is our last one all the way through ba and 371 so selecting that and now we want to give those a format so control one i'm going to use our border so i'm going to use the border color and we'll use our consistent color which is this blue i'm going to use a thick border all the way on the right let's do this the right and the bottom here and uh, let's take a look at a dotted line we'll be going to be making some updates to this on the inside 
clicking OK. All right, so we've got our border, but I'd really like a little bit of a difference. What I would like to do is notice how this is the, the last day of the month or the first day of the month. I'd like to have a solid border at the top here, but how do I know what day is which, right? Every month has a different, it may be different. I don't wanna manually do that. We can actually use our conditional formatting to do just that. However, if I wanna add a solid line on conditional formatting, I really can't do that. So let's take a look, if I create a new rule, and I use a formula and I click format and I want to look at the border. There really is no option for a thick line, right? We've got dotted lines, we've got solid lines, we've got dash, but I don't have an option for thick border. So how are we going to add a thick border on conditional formatting when that option doesn't exist? Well, here's what we can do. We can close that out and I can select my entire range. So that's what exactly what I'm going to do. And it's going to be all the way through BA371. So we're just going to go all the way down here to BA371. And I'm going to select that range. And what I'm going to do using Control 1, I'm going to format that. And so to do that, I'm going to basically use our color. And this is the thick border. Well, you can use this thick border here. I'm going to color every single row with that thick border. So we're going to use reverse conditional formatting. So basically, any row that's not the first, we're going to give it that dotted line. So how do we do that? So again, let's control Z here. I'm just gonna allow us to highlight that. And then I wanna highlight our entire row. So this is the highlighted row. So now we're gonna go into conditional formatting. We're gonna manage rules. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a brand new rule and it's gonna be used a formula. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna say any day that is not the first of the month, I want to give it that dotted line. So using a formula, we can do something like this equals, we're looking for D6, but it's gonna be any particular row, but not just D6, we're gonna use the equals day. I wanna use the day function, cause that's what I'm looking for. So any row or D and any row starting at six does not equal one. If it does not equal one, then what I wanna do is I wanna give it that format. So we're gonna use the format here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna select our color here and I wanna use this dotted line here. So basically, if the row is the first, I want to give it the line on the top. If it's not the first, it gets the dotted line. Clicking OK and clicking OK and then applying it so it applies to is correct. So clicking apply and what that's going to do is going to select it. So now let's take a look at it. So now we see that we have the division. The end of the month has it. Perfect. So that's exactly what we want. We're going to continue down. And we see the last day of the month and the first day of the month. OK, so now we've got that nice colored border, that separation of the months which is what we want and we've added that. Next up, what I would like to do is I would like to also have the ability to color off days. Now here, let's start with holidays. So here I've got highlight holidays. So we take a look, we've got a named range called show holidays, it's tied to this. There's gonna be two conditions if I wanna highlight those holidays on the scheduler. The first condition is show holidays must be yes. The second condition must be the date is found here. We've got a named range for holidays. If I look in the formulas, name manager, and I see down here, we've got holidays. So we see the dancing ants around those holidays. So the second condition is we must find the holiday in this list. So perfect. So let's go back into our calendar and we're going to go back into the conditional formatting here, manage rules here. And I'm going to copy this range because we're going to apply to the same range. I'm going to click on new rule and we're going to use a formula for this. And again, there's going to be two conditions. So we're going to use the and equals and our first condition is going to be show holidays equal to yes. So it must be equal to yes. Okay. Our second condition is going to be based on the date. So we need to scroll up and scroll to the left and select that date. It's going to be based on D6. Second condition is we want to see if it is a holiday. So how do we do that? Basically, I want to look inside the date. If it's the holidays are found, I want to highlight the row. We can use the match and the is error. So we're going to use is error because if it's not found, it's going to create an error. So I want to trap that error inside the formula is air we're gonna use the match and what am i looking for i'm looking for d6 and of course any row beyond that we're looking in the name range called holidays so we'll type in holidays that is the named range and i want an exact match so i'm going to put zero equals false right so we want to make sure so if it's equal to false then that is the condition so we have it is air we're matching d6 holidays and it is false so those are the two conditions very good so we can put there this is part of the is air and click ok now all we need to do is just click apply we also want to make sure that we're going to apply it to the entire range so we're going to click apply here now once we apply it we need to make sure that so notice the row change we need to change this back to six sometimes when we apply it does that clicking ok and clicking apply good so let's take a look at that and we see that we have the first row which is the first highlighted we also see that we have both the 26 and we have, let's say, the 15th. So let's take a look inside. 
the first, the 15th, and the 26th. If I change this back to no, we're not highlighting the holidays, and we go back into the calendar, we see that none of those highlights are there. So that's working just right. So we can change that back to yes. Now, another one is I wanna highlight those off days. If this is yes, that's one condition, and we have these unselected. Now, we're gonna be adding some VBA very shortly to select these so that it checks or unchecks. But for right now, I really wanna focus on this particular formula that's gonna allow us to show a Saturday or Sunday. So we wanna look at that, and anything that's unchecked, I wanna highlight in our schedule as long as our highlight off days is yes. So notice that we have show off days, we have a named range for that right here. So that, again, there's two conditions. We're looking for this, and I'm looking for any particular day that is unchecked. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is I wanna determine what day that is selected. I wanna know the day of the week, and I wanna trap it in this here, Monday through Saturday. So we're gonna use the weekday function. It's gonna look something like this, weekday, then we're gonna put in whatever date we have. Then what we wanna do is I wanna select the type. Now we're gonna use type two because this is, says Monday through Sunday. And the same here, Monday through Sunday. So what I wanna know is I wanna look up C5, C6, C7, and I wanna know if it is unchecked. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna use our weekday function, the combination of that. And we're gonna use the option number two because that is our Monday through Sunday, which is the same order that we have here. And what are we looking for? I'm looking for this unchecked box. Well, what is that? If I insert here a symbol, I'm looking for a very specific symbol, this unchecked box. This is Wingdings character 111. Inside a formula, it would look something like this, equals character 111. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be looking for. And I wanna find that. So if we change that to a specific font like Wingdings, it'll automatically change. So we see that that's the Wingdings font. So what I'm gonna do is I'm looking for character 111. If it is found, I know it is an off day. And so how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna use a formula, but I'm gonna walk you through. It's a little bit complex formula. Let's say we have a date of the 1st of January. So let's say this is the date. And now what I wanna do is I wanna look to see this date. And I wanna know if this date is a, let's say Saturday or Sunday, if it has an unchecked. So we need to use the indirect, so equals indirect. Okay, so inside this indirect, I'm going to look up, basically we're gonna start right here, admin, but we're gonna use admin because it's gonna be a different sheet. So I'm gonna use admin. Then what I want to do is I want to be able to use this particular formula, C and some row. So how do we know what row it is? So to do that, we know it's C, so we wanna make sure to put it in parentheses here like this. So I'm putting in this parentheses, but the row is dynamic. Why is the row dynamic? Because we don't know what day it is, Monday, Tuesday. So C and what is the row? We're gonna use the weekday function and weekday of whatever the date is. So let's say it's January 1st. And remember, we're using two here because I want Monday through Sunday. So that's gonna tell us what row. And then we're gonna add four on top of that. So then we're gonna close the parentheses. So let's just take a quick look at that. And we know that January 1st is actually a Monday, right? So it's showing this character here. So if I were to copy this here and then paste it here, paste the values, we see that it changed. So we know that we've got the right row. So that January 1st, which is a Monday, that's correct. So I'm looking for this here. We're gonna use this indirect. I want this. It's gonna tell us if the day of the week is that. So I could do something like if, and we're gonna put this in conditional formatting, equals, and then what is the character? 111, right? So 111. Then we know it's an off day. So it's something like that. That's kind of what I want to do. So you see it's an off day. As soon as I make it checked, or just let's just say it's something else, it's going to change to false, right? So it's not an off day. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. I want to use this type of a formula inside that. So here we can just copy that. In other words, it's going to tell us if it's an off day or not, any specific date. Perfect. Knowing that, let's go back to the calendar and help us use that inside our conditional formatting. But remember, there are two conditions. We want to make sure that show off days is also yes. So again, two conditions. So again, going back into conditional formatting, we're going to manage the rules. We're going to add a brand new rule and you're going to use a formula. So equals again, and two conditions. Let's do show off days equals yes. That's one condition. And the other condition is we can paste that in there. We don't need the if, we do need the indirect. We can remove the parentheses, indirect, admin. And then remember the day, of course, we're gonna change that. That's now going to be 
d6 and every single row so that's our second condition equals character 11. so those are the two conditions so what do we want to do we want to give that a format and we can use just the light blue here and click ok so again two conditions show off these equals yes and the indirect of admin in the weekday d6 to plus four we're adding four because it starts on row five remember our starts on row five in the admin equals character 111 clicking okay we do need to update the applies to the applies to is here remember once we change the applies to here i've got to then go back in and edit this and make sure that it's six again remember it changes every time i do but of course if you do the applies to first it wouldn't change so we're going to change this back to six clicking okay all right now we're going to click apply and cool now let's take a look here and we see that we have saturday and sunday highlighted perfect if i were to remove one of these here it's no longer character of course we're going to make that available and go back to our calendar we see that only sundays are selected perfect now what we want to do is we also want to turn off highlight off days change that to no and go back to our calendar and they're all perfect so it's working really good our conditional formatting is now highlighting only weekends or in this case only saturday sunday or whatever day we've selected so we're just going to copy this and paste it back here again we're going to get vba to do the heavy lifting for us on this and we'll make that work very soon i'm just pasting those things in here to make it back what i wanted okay so now weekends and holidays are both highlighted we're nearly ready to get under the hood and make this engine purr but first of all what i want to do is i want to create a sample shape for our appointments our appointments are all going to be shape based so what we want to do is we want to create a sample that can be duplicated by vba so we want to take a look we'll use a shape we'll use a rounded rectangle and it's going to look something like this now the width and the size doesn't really matter even the color doesn't matter which will be controlled by vba but we can set something up pretty simple like this now we may not want any borders on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the shape outline and i'm going to give it a very slight shadow i don't want a large shadow on that because I don't want it to affect others. So what we'll do is we'll go into the shadow options here and we will select a specific shadow, uh, the lower right, but then I'm going to customize it just to make it very slight shadow so that it lifts up just a bit, but not too much. So I like the way that that looks. Now what we want to do is we want to put in some sample text, sample text, and we want to format this in a way that's going to be formatted for us. So we do want to update this. So we're going to put it in the middle. I want it left justified and I want to change the text options here to make sure that our left margin is very small, like 0 0.02. We wanna make sure that we have enough room for all the text. We can remove the right, top, and the bottom margins. Okay, I like the way that that looks. That looks pretty good, and we are good to go on that. So all we need to do now is give it a name. So we're gonna call this sample appointment shape. And then we don't necessarily need this anywhere near. I'm not gonna put it in the hidden columns because it can create issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna move it over to the right and just get it out of the way. We really don't need it. VBA will find it wherever it is and duplicate it and put it in. So we can put this over here. As long as it's named correctly, we don't need to worry about that. We'll zoom back to 100%. And what we wanna do is we can start with getting this admin. We can bring up our tabs now and let's put the admin into effect. Now we've got a few things on the admin. When I make a selection here, I want a color palette to show up. I actually do have a color palette. If we look in the selection and we show all shapes, I do have a color palette here and it is called color palette. So what I want to do is I, when I make a selection on any cell here, I want this color palette to appear. Selecting on a color will change the color here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And of course, we're gonna use VBA to do that. So how do we do that? Well, of course, we're gonna go into VBA. You can use Alt F11 as a shortcut. You can also use the developer. If you don't have the developer, you can just right click on any bar here and click customize. And you wanna make sure that the developer is selected here. Once inside that developer tab, We'll click visual basic and that is going to bring up the editor notice there is some code that is for the sample so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this sample up which is here it's open on my other screen and it's going to bring us to some admin now i want to focus on some code directly inside the admin screen here and remember when i make a selection i want this particular shape to show up it is simply a shape of rectangles combined in a group called color palette so i'm going to copy the name here control c and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into a specific event on the sheet so i'm going to select on worksheet and the one we want is automatically here called selection change and the first thing is when a user makes any type of selection on the sheet i want to make sure that that shape is no longer visible so we're going to do something like this if shapes and the name of the shape which i copied here color palette dot visible equals true then 
simply hide it. So shapes, color palette, dot visible equals MSO false. So simply making any selection on the sheet is going to hide it. So let's take a quick look at that, reduce that. I make any selection at all and it is going to be hidden just like that, perfect. Now, when I make a specific selection on any of these cells, I want it visible, C15 through C33. Now we could make sure that there's a value here, but it may not be necessary. So basically keep it simple. Any selection from C15 through C33, we want that color palette to show up and we want it to show up in a specific location. So it's also part of the selection change event. Let's just put it on appointment type color selection. Okay, so we're gonna type in if not intersection, that's auto hotkey that automates that. And again, we're focused on the range of C15 through C33. If a user makes a selection on that, then we must do something. What is it that we want to do? We want to display that color palette. So we're gonna focus on that with shapes, that specific color palette, what do we want to do? I'm gonna set the left position of that. I want that to show up and it's gonna be based on range. And of course, C is the column and the target dot row dot left. So the left position, set left position. Once we do set that left position, we want to focus on the top position and that's going to be based on the column C and the target row, but I want one row down. I don't want that row. So I'm going to add one to that dot top and that is our top position. And last thing, we need to make sure that it is visible. So we can do that with dot visible equals MSO true. So that's it. That's all we need to do. Now we've got a macro that's already tied to this. And uh, I believe I want to make sure that it is inside our admin macros. I do have one macro written. It's this here called admin set color. So if I copy this and all this is going to do is going to take the interior color of the shape, which is here, the interior color of whatever shape that was selected. And it's going to put the color of the cell inside that. So basically whatever shape the user selects, it's going to grab the interior color of that. It's going to take that interior color and it's going to color the cell of the selected cell. So it's going to basically change the color of the cell from whatever shape that was selected. And then we're simply going to hide it. So that's all. It's the only macro that I've written. Everything else we are going to type out. This is just a simple one. And so all we would need to do is just select on that right click. I think it's already assigned assign the macro we can assign it to the entire group we're going to select on this workbook only notice we only have one single macro inside that and then we can select on that everything else we're going to be writing together clicking okay so now all we need to do is just select on a color and we've then selected okay very good so i like the way that that looks it's working just fine as we want it perfect let's choose a different color here okay so next up what we're going to be doing is another selection change when i make a selection on here i want it to change if it's unchecked i want it checked if it's checked i want it unchecked so basically we're going to do the opposite and remember this is called character 111 but what is the other one let's take a look at what the character is because that's going to be very important what we're going to do is we're going to go and answer and this is the one i want we're going to focus on wingdings 254 so this is a very simple code so let's go ahead and write that now that's going to focus on a selection change event once again inside the admin sheet and we're going to keep it on that inside so how do we do that let's escape out of that cell and we're going to focus on cells here c5 through c11 so that's the one we want to focus on inside the selection change event so let's go down here on workday selection okay again if not intersection we're going to focus again on c5 through c11 so c5 through c11 so if the user makes any selection between that we want to do something what is it that we want to do if the target dot value equals character 111 then target dot value equals character 254 else target dot value equals character 111 and then we simply want to select any other cell and i'll just use f4 so range f4 usually want to use a cell that a user could change so it wouldn't be a lock cell dot select so we'll just use f4 so now when i make a selection here it checks when i make another selection it unchecks and the reason we select another cell is because i can repeatedly select the same cell obviously we don't do that so that's it it's working perfectly so now we can see if we decide we're going to only work two days a week if i'm lazy we can look at our calendar and we can see that they're all blocked out now you could change this color to gray through conditional formatting if you want but it's working exactly the way we want it that's it for the code for the admin screen nothing else we really need to do except for one when i make a change to here we're going to update that let's do that now while we're at it if i make a change to this f8 i want to automatically update the format here 
So how do we do that while we're at it? Let's take a look. Now that's gonna be a change event, not necessarily a selection, but when I make a change, what cells do I wanna affect? I wanna affect all the way from D6 all the way through D371. So let's write that code right now. And that's gonna be based on a worksheet change event. So here it is. If not intersection, what cell are we gonna focus on? We're focused on F8. And we wanna make sure it's not empty. And range F8 dot value does not equal empty then we want to do something what is it that we want to do it's very easy it's a single line of code calendar that's the sheet we're going to focus on dot range here's the sheet d6 through d371 the entire range of dates dot and we're, what do we want to change i want to change the number format the number format is simply equal to the target dot value change number format or I guess it's kind of a date format, same thing, date format. So basically any change that we make in here should affect automatically what's in here. So notice we have a three date. So in here, look, it's just mem. So all I need to do is double click on here and just go out of it. So simply double clicking, it's as if we made a change, right? And so going out of it's gonna automatically affect it. Look how it changed to a single day. If I go in here and I wanna add a different format, I can do something like, let's say DDD 40s, and then let's see, we could do D of January. So something like that, MMM. So that kind of might be nice. So we could pretty much do anything we want. So it's so nice. We can do something like that's automatically going to change. So very, very cool and very easy to do. Remember, it's just a single line of code. All we're doing is we're changing the number format to whatever the user has entered. Now you wanna make sure that you've entered something obvious, but it's relatively easy. Very good, so I like that because it shows the day and the month, but pretty much whatever you want. Very, very customizable, very easy to do as well. Not a lot of code to write. So now that we've got all the code on the admin screen, let's turn our focus to the calendar macros. Now this is the calendar. So basically the idea is this. On this calendar, remember, we've got an entire full year of scheduling all the way from the first day of the year to the last day of the year. So we're gonna populate that. Because we're using shapes, it's extremely fast. So what we want to do is we want to populate this entire calendar with that. And remember, I've put some named ranges in here that's gonna help us. So what I wanna do is we've got a database here of all of our data. I wanna find all of the appointments within the given year and i want to put them in here using an advanced filter so we need some criteria for that so that criteria is going to go right here now remember we have some named ranges that's going to help us a little bit here that year is located here in b5 we're calling that calendar year so if i know the calendar year it's very easy for me to determine the dates the first day of the year and the last day of year that is our criteria so we're going to put that right in here so we're gonna use equals, greater than or equals, date function, the calendar year, January 1st, that's it. So it's gonna be greater than or equal the first of the year. And also we need it less than the last day of the year. Again, less than or equal the date, the year, December 31st. So that's less than or equal. And the fact that these are numbers is a good thing. We don't necessarily need these dates formatted as dates. It's just for criteria. And I really like to see them as numbers because that means I know Excel will see them as numbers. And then we make sure that we get the right data. Those results are going to come here. We're then going to loop through all of this dates starting from row three all the way to the last we're going to duplicate that sample shape that we had we're going to duplicate that for every single appointment we're going to put that starting time wherever it starts and then we're going to put the duration so for example if it's a one hour appointment and our durations is 15 minutes we want to make sure that the duration is going to be four columns long so we notice that so four columns all the way from let's say if it starts at 9 15 all the way until 10 and then 10 15 is available so that's exactly what we want to do with the code so we can write the code that's going to automatically refresh and populate this calendar with those shapes of scheduled appointments so let's get to that so the first thing we want to do is dimension some variables for that so let's do that option explicit is going to be there that's going to ensure that we define those variables and we're going to shrink this up we don't need this we can increase the space for code as we write more code so to do that we need some variables so we're going to dimension the appointment row as long i need to know what row the appointment is on the appointment column as long also because we need to know the column we're going to run through that data so the last row as long we're going to need that for our appointment data i also want to know the last result row remember we've got results that are going to come in and I need to know the last result row because we're going to have to loop through those results we got a little bit more so we're going to mention duration columns 
as long. How many columns is that appointment? Very important. Also, the result row, as we loop through the result, we're going to need to know which row we're on. And also the type row. Now, this is important as long. Why is the type row important? Because I need to extract that color. I need to look for the type. I need to find what row it's on. And I need to extract the color from column C. So it's very important that we grab that type row. Continuing on, now that we have that, we also need some string variables. So the first one we're going to do is the appointment color as a string. So that color is going to be a string. We're going to grab that color from column C and the appointment row. The appointment ID in this case is a string as a string. We don't need to use it as a long variable. And I also want to know the appointment name. We're going to need to populate that shape with the appointment name. So we're going to need the appointment name also as a string and the appointment type. I need to find that appointment type. So the appointment type also needs to be a string variable. Now that we have those string variables, we need to work with a specific appointment shape. So we're going to do the appointment shape as a shape. Once we have that, I also need to dimension some date variables. I need to know the appointment date as a date. I also want to know what that start date is. Start date, that's going to help us as a date. So next up, what I want to do is we're going to have to set the shape up. What is the left position or the top position? So we're going to dimension the appointment left as double. So we'll use the double variable for this. Appointment time as double. And I want to know the appointment duration as a double because those are decimals. So we need to use the double appointment duration as double, and then the scheduled duration. Now, both are important. The appointment duration is the duration of the appointment, and the scheduled duration, schedule duration as double, is what we have our schedule set at. Remember, we have a very specific duration for our schedule located right here inside F5. It also has a name range called duration. So we need that inside a variable. So that's very important because we need to know how many cells. So we've got the schedule duration that's going to help us with that. And also the last thing is the schedule start, that time schedule start as double. And the reason we're using double is because we may want to use them in math and it helps us. Great. So let's write our first macro, which is going to be sub calendar. And this will be the biggest macro we write. After that, it's going to be easier. And then refresh. Okay. So this is going to refresh the calendar. Anytime we want to refresh, what we need to do is we need to clear all the existing shapes. So clear all existing, uh, let's say appointment shapes. Now, the important thing is we want to make sure that we remove all the shapes, obviously not these shapes, but we want to be very specific with our names. And we really don't want to remove our sample shape. Our sample shape must always remain because it is this sample shape, let's bring it over a little bit here, that we must always use to duplicate to create an appointment. So we don't want to delete this one. The name of this called is sample appointment shapes. So we want to make sure that the names that we use to create these are very different. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through these. So for each, we have appointment shape in calendar. We must specify the sheet calendar dot. That means we have the name right when the IntelliSense comes up dot shapes. So we're going to loop through all the shapes in our sheet. We're going to close that loop next appointment shape inside that. What we're going to do is we're going to check if using the in string based on the name of the shape that we select. So we're going to use the in string command appointment shape dot name. I'm looking in that. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for something that contains calendar appointment. So that's the unique name that we're going to assign. And then we're going to add on the appointment ID, but every single one is going to contain that if it's greater than zero. So we're going to check greater than zero. That means the shape does contain that string. Then what are we going to do? We're going to delete it appointment shape dot delete. So this is going to loop through the entire and delete all the shapes. Great. So that's all we need to do. We're going to turn our focus onto the appointments database. That is this sheet right here. This is where we need to run our advanced filter. So that's where our focus is going to be. So let's put in run advanced filter, run advanced filter for appointments database. All right. Now, so we're focusing with appointments database and making sure that we have the sheet name right by using the period just to helps us to confirm it. So now that we know, I'm going to determine the last row. It's going to be equal to a nine XLF. This is the last row of data. Now, if we don't have any data, we're going to make sure if the last row is less than four, we're going to exit the sub. So now what we're going to do is let's do run our advanced filter first. And so what, what I want to do is I want to ensure a three, which is our first header row. It's going to go all the way through G notice our column. So we're going to change this to G. And again, I use auto hotkey to automate that. It makes things a lot quicker. Our criteria is right here. I two through J three. So we're going to update that I two through J three. So we're going to change that up to J Three. Now, next up, our results are simply going to come from M2 through R. So we're going to change that from M to R. Okay. I want to determine the last results row. It's going to be based on column M. So last results row is based on column M because I want to know 
if there's no results we can exit the sub okay so we can write something like this last results rows less than three we can exit the sub now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off application dot screen updating equals false but make sure we turn it on turn off screen updating but we must turn it on before we end the macro so we might as well go down here and do that right now application dot screen updating equals true so everything gets written in between turn on screen updating great so now that we have that we can write our code here so what do i want to do basically i want to start looping through all of the data but i want to get some variables before i start a loop i want to get some information i want to know what our scheduled duration is and i want to know the schedule start and i want to know the start date now we have that information here we've got the variables that we set up so the scheduled duration let's set that up first so the schedule duration is equal to we already have that named range called duration if we remember in the admin screen it's called duration schedule duration so now that we have that inside a variable i also want to know the schedule start now the schedule start is equal to our start time and i'm just going to go over that with you start time just so you can see where that is coming and that's going to be important because i need to know what column to put in schedule start time okay so let's take a quick look inside our admin screen so we can review that schedule start time if we take a look here we see it's 8 a.m and we see it's called start time when we see we've got a named range we can use it inside brackets inside the vba called start time next up we also want to have our start date and our start date is simply equal to this let's add this now I'm going to call it start year date let's go ahead and add that inside our calendar our start date is right here so i'm going to give this a name called start year date and i'm going to copy that control c and enter that okay so that means the first date is always called start year date so now that we know that we can put that inside a variable the start date inside brackets pasting that in here is called the start year date okay that's all going to help us inside our code so now that we have all of those variables we are ready to run our loop for the result rows equal to let's go back to the sheet so we can focus on the appointment database three all the way to the last row in this case it would be uh 62. so we want to run a loop from three to last and we need to grab the variables i want to know the appointment id the name the type the date the time i need to know all of this information i need to put all inside variables first thing we need to do is run that loop for three to the last result row closing our loop next result row inside that loop now it's time to grab all of the information that we need appointment id is equal to dot range and then it's going to be based on column m and the result row dot value appointment id great so we can copy this here and then we're going to just make the update for the additional variables so we have the appointment id i also want to know the appointment name if we use lowercase and then we can see that it's going to change to uppercase so we know we have a right so this is going to be in column n and of course this is our appointment name once we have that notice it changed to uppercase so i know i've got it right next up the variable is the appointment type and it's going to be equal to what is inside column o so we can update that to column o very good and that's going to be our appointment type we're going to use that to determine the color that's why it's important next up we also want to have inside our date right so we have the appointment date and that's going to be inside column p so you guys get the idea here as we're populating these variables and then we're going to put a notation here appointment date obviously and then next up we certainly need to know the time that's going to be important because we need to know what column to place that in the first place appointment time is going to be equal to what's located inside column q as we go in order here and then that's our appointment time next up we also want to put the duration very important appointment duration is going to be equal to what's located in r and that's going to be the last of our variables now we need to get some information from that appointment duration oops so something went wrong there here and we need to make sure that we have the quotations here all right perfect and we need to get rid of this extra space that's not going to help us okay very good so next up after we have the appointment duration i need to determine the number of columns as i mentioned to you if it's every 15 minutes we have an appointment that starts at 10 a.m and it is one hour i need to know that it's four columns how do i know that well if i have an appointment that's one hour and i divide it by our duration which is 15 minutes it's going to give us four so that's exactly what we're going to do and that's why we've used double variables so we can do this duration columns is equal to we're going to use integer just in case and it's going to be our appointment duration divided by our duration so we have that schedule duration very good and so we can determine that and the set number of columns for duration perfect so now we know the number of columns that's very important and remember if this changes for example let's say we decide we're going to change this to 30 minutes 
and we have a one hour, it's automatically going to change here because this is going to go from 8.30 to 9 to 9.30, and it's going to be two columns. So it works perfectly with those dynamic durations. So now that we know the number of columns, next up, what I want to do is I want to know the type row, and I need to find that. So we've got the type here. We've already added the appointment type, but I want to know what row is it found on? We have a named range for this. And the reason we want to know what row is, once I know the row, I can determine the color because it's going to be column C. But if appointment type is not found, we need to know. So we're going to wrap it in on air, resume next, and on air go to zero. And we're going to type in here, it's going to be the type row is equal to, we're going to go in the admin screen. And that admin screen is going to be based on the appointment types. This is our named range. I'm going to use the find command. And what do I want to find? I want to find the appointment type and I want to look in the Excel values and Excel whole and what do I want to turn I want to return the row this is going to get type row so now that we have the type row I want to run a check if the type row is zero there's nothing we can do so here we're going to if the type row does not equal zero meaning it has been found then what are we going to do then we're going to set the appointment color is going to be equal to admin dot range column c and the type row dot interior dot color get interior color and just so we can review exactly what we're doing once again i'm going to look in here i'm going to determine what row is on then i'm going to look in column c i'm going to find whatever color is the background color of this cell and i'm going to put it into a variable called appointment color right here very good so now that we have that inside the appointment color i also want to do something like else probably not necessary else appointment color equals empty although it should default to that just going to be double checking so that means if it's found one time but it's not found the second time it's going to clear it out so this is kind of nice so next up what we want to do is i want to find the appointment row what is the row that's associated with it so how do we know what the row is the appointment row let's take a look at here if the appointment's on the first of january we know the appointment is six if it's on the second we know it's on row seven so basically i need to find the row how can we do that well because i know the start year date I can simply subtract the number of days to determine the row so it's going to be inside a very simple formula something called this the appointment row is equal to the appointment date minus start date and then we're going to add six plus six why are we adding six writing six simply because oops let's get out of there writing six simply because our first date starts on row six so that's why we're adding it that means again if the start date is on the first and the appointment date is on first we're simply going to do one minus one zero so we're going to find it plus six is six so perfect on that so next up what we want to do is i want to determine the column so if i know the row already now i know the column if it is eight o'clock so we have here eight fifteen or nine o'clock i need to subtract the start time what is the start time it is eight o'clock so if I have a nine o'clock appointment and I subtract nine minus eight, and then I divide it by the duration, I'm going to get the column number. And I remember, I simply need to add it to E, which is the fifth column. So to do that, we can do something like this. Appointment column is equal to, and then we do in the parentheses here, appointment time minus the scheduled start time divided by the scheduled duration and then we can add in five so very very simple here let's do this again if this is nine o'clock and this is eight o'clock we're going to get one hour if we divide one hour by 15 minutes we're going to get four and if we add five we're going to get nine so that means we know a nine o'clock appointment is going to be on column number nine so it would be right here which is column number nine five six seven eight and nine so we know it's on column i okay so that's all we need to do so we know the column we know the starting point but what about the ending point right the ending point is simply the duration columns plus the appointment column so we know the duration so it's relatively simple because we have that let's just write in if the appointment column is greater than i want to set a limit on this 53 then we're just going to say go to next appointment i'm going to write in next appointment so in case it's over the max right we don't want anything to go over the max so we're going to set that so that's going to just going to set the beyond we don't want it to go beyond this continuing on so i also want to set something to make sure that we've got the limit so we've got the row we've got the column and we're ready to move on i'm going to duplicate the shapes now what shape we're going to be doing it's going to be that sample shape is this one right here so we can copy this to make sure that we get the name right Control c and it is this one that we're going to be duplicating giving it a unique id giving it some text inside and then positioning it so 
first thing we want to do is focus on the calendar. Remember, we're inside the appointments database, so we need to call out the calendar. Calendar dot shapes, and then what shape we're going to be using this shape. And that's the one we want to duplicate. So dot duplicate, and we want to give it a very unique name. So dot name is going to be equal to calendar appointment, which is the same name we used up above when we deleted it. And we're going to add in the appointment ID and appointment ID. We want to make sure that each shape is unique. So by adding this, once we have that, we can then work with this individual shape. So I can copy this and we can focus on that with calendar dot shapes. That's the one we just created and we're going to work with it. Double quotes here. We don't need. So what are we going to do inside that? Well, the first is the left position dot left is going to be equal to again, calling out the sheet calendar dot here. We're going to use cells because both the appointment row and the appointment column are dynamic. So we've already set the appointment row here. And next up, we already set the appointment column dot left. So there we have the left. Next up, we're going to set the top position. So we're going to do dot top is going to be equal again, calendar dot cells appointment row appointment. Oops, I now something here appointment. I knew I missed something column. And then again, if you're not sure you got the variable right, you just lowercase these. And if they changed up, we know we got the variable right. Again, like this one, see, it's not right appointment column and then it's right. So we see how that, okay, so we can set the top position dot top. Once we have that top position, I'm just going to add one because I don't want it right on the top. So we set the top position. Now what I want to do is I want to double check if the appointment column plus the duration columns is greater than 53 here. I just don't want it to go beyond our schedule. So we're going to set a limit to that. Then the duration columns equals 53 minus the appointment. And I'll explain that what that means. Basically, I don't want our schedules to be beyond column 53. So we're going to set the limit. This is going to be the last column. If we take a look equals column, we see that that is column 54. So I don't want it to go beyond 53. So that's important. So that's just setting the limit so that we don't go beyond that. And then once we have that limit, we can then move on. So continuing on now, what I want to do is I want to set the width. So let's do this dot width is going to be equal to now basically what I want is the width is the entire range of however many columns. So that's going to be the range. So we can set that up. It's based on the range. So it's going to be here width equals range. And we're going to start out calendar dot cells. We know it's the appointment row appointment column. So that's the first part of range. What is the second part of our range calendar? Same row. So it's not going to change dot cells appointment row, but the columns are going to be changed. So we're going to do the appointment column plus the duration column. So duration columns, we want the width of that. So I want the entire width. So basically what we're doing is we're saying there's five columns in this range or four columns. We're going to set the entire width of that. And that's the entire width of our shape. So that's all we've done. Just the width of the range is the same as the width of our shape set appointment width. Okay. Just so we know we're on that. Once we have the width of that shape, we're ready to set the height. So what is the height of it? I'm just going to set the height equal to whatever the height of the cell is. Height is equal to, so basically it's going to be this, whatever the height of the row is. So I can just copy this, paste this here, and it's going to be dot height, set height. Sometimes we want to set it to a little bit less so we can do minus one, slightly less. Now that we have the height, I want to add the text in there. What text do I want to add? I want to add text frame to dot text range dot text is going to be equal to what we're well, simply going to add in the appointment time. Now I can add the appointment time in, but I'm going to need to format that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write format because I want to format very specific times. And what is the format that we're going to use? I'm going to use something like H colon MM. I want a really small, let's do something like a slash P. So that's the format that I want to assign. And so once that's formatted, I want to add additional. So I want the time. Then what do I want? I want a colon, then a space. And then I would like to have the name of the appointment, which is called the appointment name here. And this is, we're going to call it text inside shape. Perfect. So we have the text inside a shape. Remember, we need to give it a color also. So we can do that. I want to make sure if appointment color does not equal empty, then we want to color it. I want to make sure that we have a color. If for some reason it's empty, remember we've set it here. We've set the appointment color to possibly empty or possibly have a value here. So if the appointment color is not empty, then we're going to color it. So how do we do that? Dot fill dot for color dot RGB. And what is that RGB color It's going to be equal to whatever is inside appointment color inside that variable set shape color. 
you can scroll up a little bit put that in the middle of the screen so now that we've set the shape color of the appointment and now what we want to do is we want to assign a macro actually let's write a macro here called sub because it's going to be the next macro we're going to write just so we don't create an error we'll make it something a little bit clearer calendar appointment select so it is the same macro that i want to run now we can tie this to the sample and the sample is going to get duplicated that would work too or we can do it programmatically or both on action equals then we're just going to paste it this is going to be a macro to run now the reason i want to assign a macro to these is because when a user selects an appointment i want that appointment to populate these fields so that i can edit or update those or maybe even delete it so that's why we need to assign a macro to that that is it that's all we need for the shape so we're going to clear that out and we can then remove the spaces and see if there's any errors sometimes there's variables wrong but we'll fix them okay and we have a different sub so there's no error good created saving our work before running a macro always a good idea and we'll run a check on our macro we'll run it check okay schedule start let's fix that variable obviously that's not correct we'll check for any more variables continuing on and let's see end sub we expect it end sub obviously we need to end that sub we must have cleared that out by accident end sub that's important now continuing on okay let's take a look at this issue here left we need to see we've got appointment row here appointment column here however the appointment row is zero so how's the appointment row zero let's take a quick look obviously the equals should be minus not equals <laughs> Okay, I'm sure you guys caught that already. Appointment time minus the schedule, not equal, certainly. Continuing on, okay, let's look. It looks like we ran this time without any issues. We've got some shapes. I don't like the color of that shape. So the sample is taking that fade out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the sample just a standard color. Any color is fine, I just don't want it to be a faded color. So we're just gonna give it a standard light blue like that. So now when we do that, let's run the code again and we'll see that the shapes all have the standard color okay that looks pretty nice i like the way that that's looking everything's looking good let's take a look so now we see we can click on them when i click on them of course we want to populate that the schedule's looking good this says 10 o'clock correct so we have the homecoming parade and it's going to last until 12 o'clock perfect so continuing on so now what do we want to happen well now i want to be able to do a few things obviously previous and this month i wanted to be able to populate these things here's what i want to do when I select on this month, it's currently we're in February. I want it to determine that it's February and I want it to scroll automatically to this position here. However, I want to keep the header and I want to keep the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze both the top and the left column. So to do that, we're simply going to go into view here and then we're going to go into freeze paints and we're going to freeze the paints. Now, when I scroll up, perfect, that's going to remain. When I scroll to the left, perfect our column right so that's good that's exactly what i like let's right justify this here which it should be actually we'll put it in the center just so we can see it a little bit better now that we have that what i would like to do is i would like to make these things work but let's bring these over these should not be let's bring this shape over here we want to make sure that we don't mess with these up so to do that we're going to select over here and we just want to make sure that this doesn't go over into that so now when we scroll over here it doesn't overlap which is perfect bring in this one this obviously got increased so again we want to make sure also that this one doesn't size or the cell so we could just bring it down here to a more reasonable we don't need it that big so that it's centered over our area very good so we got a few things to do i've got a macro this month previous month and next month and let's start with that so we're going to go back into the sub here we've got appointment select which will be populating very soon but let's focus on uh the ones for the scheduling so let's go ahead and write those and the first one we're going to write is a macro that's going to help us go directly to the given month whatever that month is so we're going to write in sub calendar and then underscore go to month. So whatever the month it is, it's going to go directly to that. We're going to dimension the month start as a date. I want to know that month start. And I also want to know the calendar row. What row are we going to automatically go to? Calendar row as long. Focusing on the calendar, that's our sheet. So with the calendar. And also we want to make sure the month start what is the month of that start if we take a look in here we know that our start date we've already set it up based on this variable here just like it's called the start date year so this is the starting day so we want to know that and i'm going to put that into the month start however when we want to change we are going to put the month directly inside column a so let's take a look at that so what we want to do is i want to make sure that we're going to unhide it so opening up those what we have is i want to know the selected month so the idea is to change the month and the year and then i want to go to a specific month so that all i have to do if i use next month i'm going to change this to two and then i want to locate that so in this 
case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna base the date on this month number, whatever the month number is. So if I increase or decrease this month number, we can easily go to it. So I need a date based on this year, based on this month, and then the first of the year. So to do that, we're gonna create that inside the variable. And we wanna grab that date, so we're gonna use date serial to that. So equals date serial, and with date serial, we want to do the year as the integer. Well, we know what the year is. We know it's located in B5, dot range B5. And the next step, we also need the month. Months is located in B6, dot value. So that's the month. And what is the day? The day is simply one, the first day. So now we know the month start that we want to go through, the first day of whatever month. Now that we know that, what I want to do is I want to set that row. What is the row? So we're going to use calendar row. We're going to use date part for that. Date part and for the date part we need the interval it's a string so we're going to use y because that's what we're focused on month start and of course we're looking for the row so we need to add five so this is basically going to find the day of the year the first day would be one the second day would be two so we're simply adding on five to that we're going to look for the calendar row based on the day number of the year okay so once we have the number if the calendar row does not equal zero, or let's just put, certainly we need a greater than, just in case, greater than five. So let's just add that in here. As long as it's greater than five, greater than five, then we're gonna do active window. This can help us scroll. Scroll row is gonna be equal to the calendar row. Great, so the idea is if this changes to two, so now we're on January, let's move it over so we can see it in action. If I run this macro, it's automatically going to scroll to February. Great. Let's go scroll up and change it to, let's say, April. So just changing the month. And of course, VBA is going to be changing that for us. We're not going to be manually doing that. And I run it one more time. It's going to go all the way to April 1st. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So it's going to scroll to the beginning of the month, whatever we do. Excellent. So now that we have that, we're going to write some macros that are going to help us navigate through these. So the first thing, what I want to do is we can write the selection since it's down here already. We'll write that in with calendar. That means when I select on an appointment, I want to load that appointment. Okay. So now we got the sheet right now. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on the appointment ID. Now the appointment ID is going to be what I need to extract. When I make a selection on a particular item, let's scroll up here and we want to make sure I need to get the appointment ID. The appointment ID is 26. How can I get the appointment ID? I can remove calendar appointment. So I'm going to copy that. If I remove the text from the name of the shape that we've selected, what is left is the appointment ID. So we can do the appointment ID is replace. And what is the name of the shape? It's going to be application caller. That's the name of the shape that call the macro. So we're going to use replace. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to replace it with nothing. That's going to leave us with the appointment ID, extract appointment ID. What am I going to do with that appointment ID? I'm going to place it directly inside a cell. So we want to put it inside B2. So dot range B2 dot value equals appointment ID. Okay, very good. So now that we have that, I want to then run a macro called which we haven't created yet appointment and then load. So we haven't created that. I'm commenting it out. So I will create a macro called appointment load, which will load the appointment. Now let's continue on. So that's the macro that's going to run. Now what I want to do is I want to write macros for the previous, next, and the current month. So let's do this. Sub calendar underscore previous month. So it's going to be relatively simple on this one. We're going to focus on the calendar. And I just want to make sure that we can go to any month or something. I want to check if we are on the January month. And the reason is, is if we're going preview and if I'm in, let's scroll all the way up to the top here. If I'm the selected month is January, I need to go to the previous year and set the month to 12. So I need to reduce this by one and make the month 12. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. If dot range b6 dot value equals one then on january go to previous year and december and then end if make sure our loop is closed here and okay continuing on so now that we have that what do i want to do dot range b5 dot value we're simply going to reduce the year by one so b5 equals b5 minus one reduce year by one and then also b6 which is our month we also want to change that to 12 it's going to go to december equals 12. that's so going to set it set to december and because it's a new year i need to refresh the calendar right this calendar is for a single year at a time anytime we change the year 
we must automatically refresh calendar. So refresh calendar. And we only need to do that when refresh it. Okay, let's line things up quite nicely. If we are on January, we need to update that. Else, reduce the month by one. Let's do B6 value equals B6 value minus one. That's going to be the previous month. Else, B6 value equals B6 value minus one. And that's it. Now, all we need to do is run the macro that we've already created here called calendar go to month. So this is the macro we're going to run every time there's a month change. We only need to refresh the schedule when we make a year change. So go to specific month. And that's all we need to do. Very good. We can just simply copy that and make some adjustments for our next month. So I'm going to copy that here. Actually, we're going to copy the entire macro here. And then I'll just make sure to rename the macro. And this is going to be called next month. So we've copied it and pasted it. And we need to make adjustments. So now again, of course, if we're on month number 12 on December, go to next year and January. So B5 is simply going to increase the year. So we're going to add a plus to that. And we're going to change this to increase. And of course, we're going to set to January instead of December. We are also going to refresh the calendar. However, if it's not, we're simply going to increase the month by one. So that's all we need to do. And then saving our work. Last up, what we want to do is I want to go to the current month. So here, sub calendar underscore this month. What are we going to do here? So we're going to, again, we're going to focus on with calendar and now what i want to do is i want to make sure that b6 is the current month so dot range b6 dot value equals the current month so we can do the month of date this is the current month set current month now what i want to do is i only want to change the year and refresh it if the year is different so i want to check if the year of the current date does not equal what's in B5, that means we need to change the year. Then, only then, do I want to update the year. Dot range B5 must change to the current year. Dot value equals the year of the current date. Set to current year. And of course, if we do set it to the current year, we do need to refresh the calendar because we're changing the year. And only then do we need to do that. So that's it. And then regardless, we're going to run the macro that's going to go to the specific month. Very good. So I like that. We're going to remove the additional spaces. And now what we can do is we've got the shapes saving our work. We're simply going to then assign the macros to our existing shape. So previous month, clicking assign macro, we are going to do previous month, click OK. This month here, we can use both the icon and the shape. We're going to assign the macro to both. So holding down the control, assigning the macro, and that's going to go to this month. And lastly, next month, assigning the macro here. And then we're going to go to next month, clicking OK. We're currently in January. Let's make sure we got that appointment ID. OK, making sure we have that. That's important. All right, very good. So saving our work so far, we've got January selected. I'm just going to change the month here to January so it's consistent here. I'm going to go to next month. It's going to go to February next month. Perfect. Previous month. February, I'm going to click this month and it's going to go to February. I want to make sure that the year changes. We don't have any data for the previous year, but it does go to the previous year, which is correct. That's exactly what I want. It goes to December and then it goes back to November of the previous year. Okay, I like that. That's looking really good. And of course, our text changes up here perfectly. As you see, it changes to December of 2023, which is exactly what we want. Okay, things are looking really good. Great. All we need to do now is when we select on an appointment, one of the appointments, the information loads up. We'll be able to do new appointment, save update, and delete, and then I'm going to let you go. So let's continue on. So we're done with the calendar macros. We're going to focus on the appointment macros now. So we need to only add a few variables for that, not too much. So we're going to mention the appointment row as long and the appointment column as long. We're going to use data mapping here. It's going to make things very, very fast. And we're going to write our first macro, which is going to be used for appointment load, sub appointment underscore load. Now that's the same macro that we, oops, let's add that in. Now this is the same macro that we've added in. So we can uncomment it out now. So we're going to go back and we have the one here called appointment load. So we can uncomment. We just want to make sure that the names are the same. Once we have that, we need to make sure that we have a database row that is associated with that. That's going to be located inside B3. So with the calendar, to focus on that. If dot range B3, which is our row, we have to have that dot value equals empty then message box please select a correct appointment to load and then we're going to exit the sub without a row we cannot move forward now that we do what we're going to do is we're going to put that into a variable point row is equal to whatever's inside b3 that is the database row that's associated 
appointment database row. Once we have that, we can use data mapping for 227. We take a look at this, we see that we have G3, the dates in N3, R3, W3, AA3, and AG3. So all those fields are mapped. If we take a look inside our database, G3, AA3, N3, R3, W3, and AG3. So from two all the way to seven, we're gonna run a loop. We're gonna either take the information from this information, load it into G3, A3, or when we save it, we're gonna take the information from these cells and put it into the columns. And that's called data mapping. We can do that with just three rows of code. So for appointment column, it's equal to two, two, seven. We're not using the first column because the first column is the appointment ID, which is already there. So next appointment, column and to do that we're simply going to use dot range is going to be equal to what is it the appointments database appointments database cells it's located in row one that's where the information and then it's going to be appointment column dot value so the value of that's the cell dot value is equal to what we can call out the information it's coming from the appointments database dot cells appointment row appointment column and basically dot value so we're bringing over the data from our database into the cells bring over data okay so that's it so let's close that up now the macros already signed when we selected and then what we're going to do is we're just going to run that macro make sure there's no errors saving the work as we do that and now when we make a selection appointment that information should load so let's take a quick look selecting on this one perfect 8 a.m one and a client meeting perfect just the way we have that appointment type homecoming parade 10 a.m. to 12 here, two hours, family time, homecoming parade notes. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to be able to add a new appointment. And all we need to do is, of course, add in some information that we are going to clear some certain cells out. So let's do that right now. Let's write that code. So sub appointment new. With that, we are going to clear out calendar. I just copied them dot range just to make it simpler. These are the cells we want to clear out. It's basically all the cells just to make things a little bit quick. Clear out existing cells. That's it. Very simple on that macro. Now, when we save an update, sub here, we're going to call it appointment underscore save update. And to do that, simply we want to make sure that we have some required cells. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have a name, that we have a date, that we have a time and duration. All those are required. So we're going to focus on the calendar with the calendar. And to make sure that those are required, this time we're going to use VBA to help us determine that. If application dot worksheet function, now we can use the count A. I'm using count A. I'm going to count the cells. Dot range. And here what we're going to do is we're going to name all the required cells. G3, that's required. We also want to make sure N3, that's going to be a required field. R3, W3, this is a kind of a quick way to do it. I'm going to start using this much more often when I have multiple cells. I like that. And here is less than four. What does that mean? That means if any one of these four doesn't have a value in it, then I want to do something and let the user know they're all required. Then let the user know message box, please fill in the required fields, which is going to be what item date time and duration very good so i like that that's kind of helpful and we're going to exit the sub let's move this up a little bit here and we can continue on that's just going to ensure that we have the required fields now what we need to do is determine if it's a brand new appointment item or an existing how do we know that b3 is going to let us know so if dot range b3 dot value equals empty then we know it's a new appointment else existing so let's write a little note in here so new appointment if it's a new appointment what do we need we need a brand new id and we need to place that in column a so the first thing is we need to determine the appointment row is equal to the appointments database dot range a and then we'll just use a larger or none and xl up dot row that's the one last one with the value plus one is the first available row first available row once we have that first available row we're going to sign that value i'm going to sign that new appointment id to b2 so dot range b2 dot value equals whatever's in b4 dot range b4 b4 of course is that next appointment id i want to take that next appointment id and place it in b2 next appointment id i also want to place that appointment id inside the appointments database in column a appointments database dot range a and the appointment row dot value equals whatever's in b2 okay so that's going to ensure that we have that appointment id 
So once we have that appointment ID, that's the only thing we need for new appointments. For the existing appointments, all we need to do, appointment rows equal to whatever's in B3. So we're just grabbing the database row from B3. That's all we're going to do. Everything else is going to be required regardless of it is a new or an existing appointment. And basically, we're just going to do the reverse of this. So I'm simply going to copy this. We're doing the absolute opposite. In other words, we're taking the values from this range and we're placing it into the database. So I'm simply going to reverse that here. And then we're just going to change the equals over. Obviously, it's not going to start out at equals. So again, we're taking the information from the range, this range, and we're putting it into the database. So just the basically reverse. And then we want to refresh the calendar in case there's any changes. So calendar refresh. So run macro to refresh the calendar. Run macro to refresh calendar okay very good so that's it for save very very easy so we're done with that i'm going to clear out empty rows and then lastly we need a delete so we might as well do that right now that's the last one sub appointment underscore delete first of all let's do a message box are you sure you want to delete this appointment yes no that's auto hotkey that kind of automates it for me that made it awfully quick so with the calendar now i got two end widths i'm going to make sure i fix that okay so removing one extra end width it's auto hotkey that automates my end width on that i've got a video dedicated just look up auto hotkey on my channel and you can find a dedicated video on that so what i want to do is i want to know if it's been saved or not if range b3 dot value equals empty then go to not saved and basically it's going to skip the delete not saved colon here but if it has been saved appointment row it's equal to whatever's in b3 so we're going to put that there put that variable dot value appointment database row now we can delete it appointments database dot range appointment row and we'll do the colon and appointment row dot entire row dot delete okay so we're deleting the entire row that's it and then also if it's not saved regardless of it what we're going to do is i'm going to do appointment new that's going to clear out the fields and I want to do the calendar refresh. So we're simply going to refresh the calendar. That's it. Relatively simple for that. Saving our work, always a good idea before running any macros. And uh, we'll check for any issues. We're going to assign those macros that we just created for that. So we're going to look on the new appointment here. I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to right click here and assign the macro. And this is going to be for our appointment new. Okay, so we can test that out to make sure it clears out all the fields. I like that. And we select on it. It's going to fill those fields. A little bit slower than I would like. I'm going to then fix that up. Then what I want to do is I want to select on here. And I'm going to right click, click assign a macro. And this one's going to be save or update. Clicking OK. Next up, delete appointment. Again, we're going to hold down the control here. And then selecting on the individual shapes, including the icon, right click appointment delete clicking okay all right so saving our work once again so far to make sure that we have it we new appointment save or update we can then let's say we select on this one the homecoming parade we want to make sure that we have selected on this when we make a change i want to increase the duration on this from let's say two to three hours and then we're going to save and update that work. And we want to make sure that that update takes effect. And it did. Right here, we see that we have the new one. It's now three hours. Perfect. Okay, so the save is up. And now let's add a brand new appointment and make sure that that automatically gets updated. What I'm going to do is we don't need these columns. I'm going to hide these columns. That's going to increase our area here. And we can move on. So what I want to do now is add a brand new appointment and make sure that that gets saved. Let's just call this Fredder's Lunch. And we're going to set it up for January 4th. So we're going to set it one four here and i want to make sure it is at 11 a.m so we're going to set 11 a.m as the time here we're going to set the duration to one hour or let's do a long lunch because fred eats a lot we're going to set a particular appointment type here we're going to do it outside lunch and then just pay lunch with fred so now saving that work we want to make sure that it appears on the schedule so saving that it's going to refresh that schedule and it shows up right here on fredder's lunch Perfect. Things are looking good. And now let's go ahead and delete that. So making sure that that works. We're going to select it, deleting the appointment. Are you sure you want to delete this appointment? Yes. And it should clear it out and refresh the schedule. Okay, perfect. It worked just great. That is excellent. We have now created this very dynamic, incredible vertical scheduling calendar, complete with scrolling calendar that you can use. And we have guiding navigation with previous this month and next month also be able to create brand new appointments delete them and of course we're able to change the formats change the color change the scheduling times fully customizable using the settings inside the admin screen if you do like these trainings i just wanted to remind you i've got an incredible mentorship course it's over 132 hours where i teach you how to define design develop and deploy your own excel-based 
applications for passive income while I develop an incredible accounting application during the course. I have that course available. Go ahead and click the link down below. There's also the Ultimate Developers VBA Library. That's an incredible resource of 500 plus macros in a single workbook that you can use to build your applications in 10x your development. Thank you so much for your continued support right here on Excel for Freelancers. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.